Well, hello, good morning, everybody. Welcome back, Jiu Jitsu 2000 here today. I'm back. I hope you guys are doing fantastic out there. Today's going to be an epic video for the Honda Monkey. This is the 2022 Honda Monkey, and the trip that I'm going on today is going to be the biggest trip that this bike has been on since I bought it. So I'm going to be heading to the Grand Canyon today. I packed a little bit of extra precautions. I have an air pump. This is a bicycle pump, but it goes up to 100 PSI. I have a, a couple tools in there, and I'm just ready to get this journey started. I'm going to be going north of Winslow out onto the Navajo Reservation. I'm choosing that route because there's less traffic out there, and I'll be able to basically choose whatever speed I want to go. So getting to where I'm at here, I was doing like 45 miles an hour and the bike's running great. I have a full tank of gas. I'm just ready for this, uh, this trip to begin. Today's Tuesday. The weather forecast shows good weather for today and Wednesday, but Thursday it says that it's going to be raining. Pretty heavy rain on Thursday, so depending on what I decide to do, I'll be set up for whatever comes. So from here, I don't know if the camera can pick it off in the distance, but that's the San Francisco Peaks, that's Flagstaff. So I'm gonna head north, go out on the reservation and make a loop all the way into Flagstaff. So it's gonna be dirt roads for the reservation until I get to Flagstaff. And then of course, it'll be all pavement from there all the way to the Grand Canyon. So I hope you enjoy this video. It's gonna be a lot of fun. I can't wait, so let's get started. Okay, I just got onto the reservation and it looks like the road is gonna be out up ahead. So I don't know if I'm gonna be able to go this way crazy let's take a look a little further off in the distance i see some water up there on the road so it looks like the road's out we'll see what happens a lot of water thank goodness for the monsoons but wow i didn't expect it to uh, blow these roads out so it looks like i might have to change my plan and my method to get to the Grand Canyon. Yeah, this road is blown out. And then off in the distance, I can see water over the road. So this is definitely not a passable way for me to get to that mountain. So I'm gonna turn around and head back to Winslow and then I'm gonna go south there's another way that I can go to get to the canyon. So here we are, gonna drop down into Winslow and then I'll go south on Highway 87 and I'll take the Lake Mary Road going west to Flagstaff. That little detour took me about 30 miles out of my way. While I'm going nice and slow through this school zone, I thought it'd be a good chance uh, to talk with clear audio about how I ride these mini motos when I go out on a trip. So what I do is I always look in the mirrors all the time to see what's coming up behind me. And then if I see a vehicle, the next thing I pay attention to is do I have the ability to get off the road and does that vehicle behind me have the ability to pass? If they have the ability to pass, I keep the center of the lane and I just pay attention to how close they're getting to me. If, if they do not have the ability to pass, 
then I'm constantly looking for the next opportunity for me to get out of the way and let traffic by. Because I'm still in break-in miles and even if I wasn't, these mini motos, they just don't do highway speeds. You know, this, it's they're wrapped out all the way just to do like 55. So most of your cars and stuff on those highways, they want to do 55, 60, 65. They want to they want to get going. So hopefully that helps somebody out there um, with how to drive a mini moto when you're going on a long trip like this. Okay, so now we're getting on to Highway 87. We're gonna go south until we see the Lake Mary turnoff. It'll be a right-hand turn. So here's a perfect example of what I was talking about in reference to the road. I'm looking in my mirrors, I don't see nobody behind me, but even if I did, I'd still pay attention to them, but I know that I'm in a passing zone, so I would hold the center of the lane. If I was in a no passing zone, I would get out of the way and let them by. sunflowers those are absolutely beautiful I love seeing that ain't that pretty when I topped over that hill at sunshine I could smell the juniper in the air Ooh, it's so amazing I'm enjoying this trip and there's not been a lot of traffic that's one of the reasons why I chose to come on Tuesday everybody's at work me. Pulled over, I saw a car in the rear view mirror, and I love this road. This gives me plenty of area to pull off. Here comes that car, I'm gonna let him buy me. I'm really enjoying this trip. This is a wonderful, wonderful trip so far. The bike's running great. Here we go. Most of my speed has been about 40 to 45. I pulled off to let these guys by. <laughs> as soon as I see them in the mirror, I get out of the way. <laughs> Life is good. Looks like the monkey finally caught somebody. <laughs> uh, it's funny, riding a motorcycle is so amazing because every time you get into the trees, you can smell the pine or the juniper. I can smell the flowers and it's so amazing. What an, what an amazing time to be alive. Those clouds are absolutely beautiful. flock to this wetland sometimes it says very interesting so off in the distance you can see the San Francisco peaks that's Flagstaff that's where I'm going and this is upper Lake Mary ain't this beautiful out here what a beautiful view and a wonderful day to ride a motorcycle so take a look at these sunflowers aren't those beautiful there's some mullein right there some berries i don't know what kind they are i don't know if i'd eat them or not but they're there and then off in the distance you can see some elk out there there's probably 300 head of elk out there i wish i had some binoculars right now and i don't know if the camera's picking those up or not that's amazing what a beautiful day to be out on a motorcycle ride and uh, i guess i'm going to get back to the monkey 
and we're gonna head on into Flagstaff. some gas. Okay. One, one point two three gallons. So I did a hundred and forty six point one miles. 146.1 divided by 1.23 gallons so I got 118.78 miles to the gallon I'm gonna screenshot that and that's not that's not bad mileage out of this little Honda monkey so we'll go ahead and continue on our ride I'm gonna go to trip B so I can take a look at trip B and see how many miles I get out of this tank of gas. Isn't it crazy to go 146 miles on $5.17? That is crazy. Flagstaff, Arizona. Beautiful place. You can see the San Francisco peaks off there in the distance. The one on the left, that's Humphreys. That's the highest point in the state of Arizona. I've hiked up there, oh, more than half a dozen times. Getting up here uh, to this turn signal, I'll take a left and I'll he head out west on Highway 180. This is a beautiful drive out here too. Staff. There's this little park there to the left. It's a college town. Nice town. Bikes running great. Ooh, forget it. Stop signs keep getting me. saw a sign a few minutes ago 35 miles to the Grand Canyon so I'm getting excited okay coming into Vale or Valley I'm not sure how they pronounce it I noticed there's a lot of off-gridders living out here on both sides of the road and from the last fuel stop to here it's it was 56 miles and I'm about 23 miles from the Grand Canyon here, from here. This place up ahead, up on the left, let's see. It used to have a lot of Flintstone stuff over there. But all this is is like a motel and a gas station. That's really all there is here. They turned this into an RV park. Nineteen miles to the Grand Canyon. Yay! Woohoo! Now I'm on Tucson. There's the Arizona Trail Gateway Community. Apparently, this town was founded in 1934. I didn't know that before. So very interesting. I think I'll grab some more gas and just kind of top off, make sure that I'm topped off, and 
and get a bite to eat and just kind of relax a little bit. So from the last gas stop, I went 79.8 miles and it cost me two dollars and 18 cents and that's at 539 a gallon so where else are you gonna go almost 80 miles for two dollars and 18 cents let's see we got 79.9 miles 0.8 miles divided by 0 0.40 of a gallon so i averaged almost 200 miles to the gallon I was going 40 miles an hour and 45 plus I was coming down the hill from Flagstaff so that is absolutely fantastic that fuel mileage almost 200 miles to the gallon that is crazy time to eat a little supper mm. Wendy's Okay, I had a good lunch or good supper, whatever you wish to call it. Now I'm going to get back on the road and head on into the Grand Canyon. A lot of traffic in this little town because this is the last thing that you see before the Grand Canyon. They got all kinds of stuff over here, those pink Jeep tours. <clears throat> I saw some helicopters, Buck Wild Grand Canyon Hummer tours. They got helicopter tours, and a lot of that stuff comes out of this uh, Tucson. Here we go, getting ready to enter the Grand Canyon. I think it's like $35 per vehicle, and motorcycles, I think, are $30. We'll just pull right up behind this uh, this car here. <laughs> Hello. How you doing today? Um, no, thank you. Have a good day. Appreciate it. You have a good day too, sir. Thank you. Has it been pretty busy today? Yeah. Oh, good. Good deal. <clears throat> thank you so much. You too, sir. And just like that, we are in the park. I have an annual military pass. So you got to show them your ID card and your military pass. And it looks like the elk are out today. There's a cow elk there. There's a couple walking around in the street. Hello, folks. <laughs> Look at these cow elk. They're pretty tame. Look at these girls and the baby there. <laughs> There's another cow right there right in front of me <laughs> they're over here eating supper <laughs> ain't that pretty cool I love the mix of trees that we're seeing over here on the park you've got the pines you've got the junipers cedars it's really pretty beautiful country I'm really enjoying this trip I like this road that I'm on this is that I think it's highway 64 it's really pretty and it's not a fast uh, road but the cool thing about it is it gives you all kinds of wonderful views of the Grand Canyon absolutely beautiful this is such an amazing place if you've never been to the Grand Canyon I highly recommend coming and checking it out it's definitely something that a lot of people should probably put on their bucket list and here we are on the 2022 Honda monkey at the Grand Canyon the monkey ran fantastic on the trip here this is such a beautiful place let's go down and take a little bit of a closer look some of the viewpoints 
that you can get are just absolutely spectacular. All the different colors and layers. It's just wonderful. What a beautiful, beautiful thing to look at. I see a bird flying around down there. This is absolutely God's painting. It's a visual painting. So beautiful. What a gift to be able to see such beautiful creation. Wow. I'm just blown away. And like I mentioned, all this is thanks to the Honda Monkey for getting me here. Wow. Look at that view. That is absolutely breathtaking. What a gift from God. What a visual, you know, such beautiful eye candy to look at. There's some birds over there. This is Grand View Point. This is absolutely beautiful. Climate in a climate, grand viewpoint. What an amazing view. Grand view trail. Grand view point. That is beautiful. Wow, that's very pretty. Wow, beautiful. And here we are at Morin Point. Spanish Discovery. Let's go take a look. See what it looks like out here. Another view. So wow, this is such a beautiful place. I'm really enjoying this trip. It's amazing. Bringing that bike. Oh, it's a lot greener down there at the bottom. Do an overnighter right there on that ledge. <laughs> pretty crazy. See the water down below. <sighs> Did I get the shot? Did I get the shot? Okay, I'm turning around because I just saw a beautiful bull elk. He was right on the side of the road and I was waving at the oncoming traffic pointing at the elk and they were acting like I was crazy. But it's right up here on the right and he's close to the road. It's a big bull and he's eating. Hopefully I'll get to see him. Where is he? He wasn't far. So let's stay sharp, see if we can see him. There he is, right there, stepped out, right in front of us. Take a look at that beautiful big bull. Look at that, I am literally like 30 feet from this bull elk. <laughs> that is beautiful. Wow, what an amazing experience. Look at that guy, it's amazing. What a gift to see something so beautiful. Wow. He's just eating his supper. What a beautiful, beautiful bull. Same thing happened when I went to the Sequoia National Forest. I uh, walked right up on the bears. 
and people just didn't understand what what I was talking about. Look at this guy right here eating supper. <laughs> well, here I am. I found a wonderful spot where I can camp for the night. The monkey is literally right on the edge of the Grand Canyon. I'm off the main road. This is a beautiful place right here. How lucky am I to be able to come to such a beautiful place and bring my monkey with me. You know, this has been a wonderful bike. It got me here with no problems. This is a beautiful area. I mean, look at that view. The Honda Monkey got to go to the Grand Canyon. What a gift. That is just absolutely fantastic. Now it's a matter of getting my hammock, getting hydrated. I do have some water. I did pig out on water when I was in Tucson because being on the Monkey, I'm limited to the amount of water that I can actually carry. I don't think that I'm gonna be putting a tarp up. I'm looking up in the sky. The forecast doesn't call for much rain until Thursday. It's Tuesday, so I think I'll be safe to do an overnighter here tonight without the fear of water coming down and stuff. Now it's time to just relax. The monkey has worked hard. It did its job. It got us here to the beautiful, beautiful Grand Canyon. Wow, I am just blown away to be here. Amazing. This has been an absolutely amazing trip. Got to get my selfie with a bull elk. And let's take a look at the uh, miles and see how many miles we've went thus far. So let's see. Um, 256.5 miles up to this point and 30 and a half since the last fuel stop. Holy smokes. Wow, and I've got, according to my hand time, I've got an hour and maybe maybe an hour and a half of daylight left. And I can just sit here, maybe hike out to that point there and see what's going on over there, what the views look like. But man, there's a yucca going off over there. Uh, Sotal, that might be Sotal actually. Wow, I'm just so happy. This has been... A fantastic adventure. I'm gonna get set up. I don't know if the camera is picking it up, but I can see very light rain. <laughs> Ain't that beautiful? Wow. And I'm doing a little charging down here. Charging my other camera. Today has been an absolutely wonderful day. The bike has run so well. The speed that I ran was about 40 to 45. There was a couple times I bumped it up to about 55. The good news for tomorrow is I should be through the 600 miles and the break-in period. So tomorrow I should be able to run that bike like a champ. So I'm going to be a little less conservative, I think, on the throttle tomorrow. But look at this epic view of where I'm at this is so beautiful this is just breathtaking five feet away from my feet is a cliff that goes down probably two thousand feet it's like this over here this cliff in the distance you look down and it's like two thousand feet or something like that so no different right here but these colors are so beautiful this is an epic place off in the distance, I can see the, the Colorado River winding through. It's just so beautiful. Look at that sunset. This is what I get to experience. And this is what I'm always talking about when it comes to you only die once. So you have to live every single day. You have to live, you got to. I've got my hammock set up and i am just so happy right now this trip just blows me away 
I can't even put words to the magnitude of this place. It feels magical. The cool thing about the hammock set up right here is the feet are at the east and the head is at the west. So as I go to bed tonight, I'm gonna wake up with the sun coming into my eyes, but I have a tree right there, a juniper, that's gonna block that sun. So this is my sleeping arrangement for the night. Wow. You know, I'm like 50 feet from the edge of that cliff from this hammock. And this is what life's all about. And I'm so thankful for having that monkey. It did a good job getting me here safe. And I look forward to tomorrow. I'm gonna call it a night. I'm gonna drink some water, get hydration back into my body. Tomorrow, I'm gonna get up. I'm gonna take Highway 64, which you can hear it. And there's an intersection between Highway 89A, which goes north and south, and the 64 that I'm gonna be on, which goes west and east. I'll connect with 89A and I'll drop, go south and hang a right and head on down into Flagstaff. Something funny that I want to tell you guys real quick is look at my, my my hands right here I don't know if the camera's justifying it look look right there. There's like a it looks like a little hickey on my wrist or something like that That's the Sun that I got today And if you look at the other wrist, I have the same thing on that wrist right there <laughs> That's where the holes were in my gloves and they let the Sun through but yeah, I got a little bit of Sun <laughs> Especially if I move this bracelet out of the way. Look at that. That's the kind of sun I got today. <laughs> but it's been a wonderful day. I love you all. I'm going to relax and start winding down for the night. Get hydrated. Get my little puffer blanket out. Get my headlamp ready and get some good rest. Tomorrow I'll be heading home. I hope you guys are enjoying this video as much as I am. I love you all. We'll see you tomorrow. Good night. Bye. Yeah, I've taken a couple rocks and I've put it in the pocket of my hammock and I've thrown it over kind of like a makeshift tent. It's getting really windy and I wanted a little bit of wind coverage to shoot this little section of video. This doesn't do anything for like water protection or anything like that, but it works good when there's bugs out or uh, wind and stuff like that. So I got startled. It's been a long time since I've been startled out in the woods. So I went to set up my other camera to do a night warp. Sometimes I cut that footage in, sometimes I don't even use it. But I set the camera up, I'm walking around with my headlamp on moonlight mode. Most of the time my headlamp, it's either on moonlight mode or low. I I very rarely do I put it on a higher setting. You just don't need that much light usually. So I set up the camera and then I went to go pee. So as I'm peeing, I notice some movement to my left and I look over there and when the light shined over there, I could see that it was eyes and it wasn't small eyes. It was large eyes. It wasn't a rodent. It wasn't a mouse. It wasn't a rabbit. It wasn't a pack rat. It wasn't nothing small. These eyes were large, not large like a big game like a cow or a horse or donkey or elk or nothing. They were large in the form of some kind of feline is what it looked like. It looked like some kind of cat. Whatever kind of animal it was, it was very stealthy, uh, like very quiet. It knew very sure-footed, very quiet-footed. It knew where it was. 
I could tell by the eyes that it was some kind of cat. I couldn't identify exactly what kind of cat was because I was on moonlight mode. I couldn't actually see the body. I just saw eyes. So I finished peeing and I give it a voice command like, hey, get out of here. Leave me alone. You know, most of the time that works with animals. But in this case, it did not. That animal continued to approach me and it got to about 30 feet away from me. Now, I'm sitting here trying to decide if I need to take a defensive stance you know, um, is this thing going to try to get me or something? I am carrying a firearm and I also have a knife. But I thought, well, let me try something else real quick. I don't want to just give it a warning shot or nothing like that. I don't want to do something like that. So I put my light on turbo, the brightest setting, and I gave it another um, voice command. Get out of here. And th at that point... It had went behind a juniper tree and I could still see the eyes, but I still could not identify the animal. I know that it was a cat. I think it was either a bobcat or a mountain lion. I'm not sure if there's links in this area, but I could see the eyes and I knew for a fact it was feline. And then, um, so... When it saw the light and the second voice command, it scurried off. It took off. Now, there's the, there's something that I want to tell you guys. The moral of the story, I guess. A lot of people that aren't educated in, in wildlife, um, when it's something that they don't understand, most people think that like cats and things like this that they're monsters that they're out to bite you they're gonna eat you they're out to get you from most of my experiences and i go out all the time this is not the case you know most of the time when you run into an animal like that they're just trying to investigate they want to find out if you're friendly if you're a foe if you're fun or if your food, fun as in entertainment, like play with you. <laughs> so once they come in and they do their investigation, they identify what you are. In most cases, from my experience, these animals leave at that point. Now, that's not all the time. There are cases where there could be a rabid animal or something like a, a coyote or something that's got rabies that's going to act away from what a normal animal would do but in most cases from my experience um, they run off when when that once they identify you i dropped myself off in this ecosystem so i have just entered this animal's house so imagine it's raining outside and your driveway is muddy and you get home from work and your front door of your house is broken into and you see footprints going into your house. You're going to approach that with caution and you're just trying to identify what's going on here. And I think that's pretty much the same with animals with in most cases from my experience. I've had uh, camping trips and things where I've seen bears and once they identify you, they're not necessarily looking to hurt you. It's important, I think, to let them know that you're there. You don't want to startle them. Uh, just like snakes, uh, snakes tend to bite more. And I'm speaking about rattlesnakes here in the Southwest. They tend to get you more when you accidentally step on them when you accidentally step too close to their where they're at maybe you instead of stepping over a log or something you step right in front of it and then they think you're too close to them you didn't see them and then they react and, and get you but um so i really wish that i could have identified this animal 
and saw what it actually is before it scurried off because that would have been really interesting to see and it's probably a beautiful specimen um but yeah i was startled for a second i'm not startled now but it was very interesting it's been a long long time since something startled me in the woods i'm gonna probably close my eyes and get some rest this isn't gonna have any effect on me being able to sleep i've uh ran into things like that so many times um it, it is what it is. I have a firearm and a knife and a headlamp and plenty of camera gear. If something happens, you guys will see it just as much as I'll see it because I'll uh, keep the camera rolling too. So I'm going to get back to relaxing and and probably catch some sleep and, and hope you enjoyed that little experience. I know I certainly did, even though it did raise the hair up on the back of my head neck for a second it was very interesting and that's one more thing that reminds me of you know things that make you feel alive is when you experience something that's uncomfortable and you find comfort in it so here i am uh pretty much 30 feet from some kind of feline and that's uncomfortable but that's where you grow uh well i got up for a little bit and that was a tiny bit chilly so I got another layer, got my little hat on, and I didn't realize how close the edge of the canyon is to me here behind me at the west. So it's very interesting. It's a beautiful place where I'm at. I got a good amount of sleep too. I was out. So that's basically what I'm doing. It's probably two in the morning. What a beautiful night of sleep. I'm just barely opening my eyes. The sun's coming up here to the east. And it's time for me to get up and get packed up and get on the road. It's so peaceful. I keep hearing helicopters flying by behind the camera here. They're probably doing rim-to-rim -to -rim tours or something. I feel re-energized. I gotta pee bad. I drank half of that bottle of water last night. So I'll probably pee, drink the other half, and get on the road. Look at how close I slept to the edge right there. <laughs> this is pretty crazy. I mean, I slept like 10 feet from this edge. Just absolutely stunning. It's not every day that you get to camp right on the edge of the Grand Canyon. What a beautiful place to sleep. want to bump into that guy in the middle of the night but if you ever needed to make cordage there you go beautiful specimen right there I can't stress it enough if you haven't been to the Grand Canyon you got to come see this beauty out here it's amazing right behind the camera let me spin this around real quick that bush over there that's some Mormon tea so you can steep that and drink it as tea gives you vitamin A vitamin C if you're sick got a cold or something like that it definitely helps The plan right now is to hydrate with the rest of this bottle and then hit the road. And then when I get to uh, Cameron, which is north of 89A, where they intersect, either there or I'll go south and head towards Flagstaff. But in either case, the next stop that I get to, definitely going to fill the water bottle. If I see any water collection naturally along the way, I'll stop and get that water too, filter it. But uh, yeah, hydration is, is crucial out here on a trip like this. 
and the temperatures aren't even that warm right now. I've heard several helicopters this morning flying kind of on this, I guess they're going rim to rim from the east rim to the west rim or vice versa. So they're probably doing their their little helicopter tours. And uh, this spot where I'm sitting right now, this is exactly where I slept. My hammock was between these two trees. So it was a wonderful place to sleep. Got a little bit of sunburn as, as you saw earlier. I should have wore a nice light long sleeve shirt for this trip. I'll just take this as a lesson learned. I mean, even my face is like red and stuff. My hair this morning was so mangled when I was brushing my hair, I had all kinds of things in my hair. Little pieces of juniper, definitely matted up. I was working on some pretty good dreads, I guess. <laughs> but yeah, I feel so much better today. I slept good, I feel rested, and I'm ready to hit the road. I've got about one more swig and we're gonna get out of here. I'm also noticing that um, way up in the sky, there's a lot of commercial airlines that fly going east to west. So they fly right over to Grand Canyon. It's beautiful. I wonder where those flights are coming from and where they're going. Good morning, Honda Monkey. Look at these yucca seeds here. That's pretty cool. Beautiful specimen. Very cool. I noticed the cactus here, the little prickly pear. The prickly pear have much smaller spines than the ones that I have out on my land. They have a lot of them, but they're thin. They're small. So quite interesting. Goodbye, Grand Canyon. Thank you for being such a wonderful host. Wow. Look at the birds. Here we go on the Honda Monkey, ready to get out of here. Don't want to catch another cactus. Really important to pick your shots here. Okay, there we go. We made it out. Honda Monkey back on the road again. What a beautiful trip. Oh, that wind feels good. I am officially leaving the Grand Canyon National Park. And the good thing about uh, leaving is my bike is over 600 miles now. So the break in miles, I don't have to be so conservative. So on the trip home, I'm planning on opening it up. So here we go. So this is where I am, trading post. Look at those gas prices are pretty good here. $3.99, I paid five something in Flagstaff. This is Cameron. They got this little bridge that you can go on and take a look over the canyon. But right here, this is the trading post. This is where I'm gonna go get me one of those world famous Navajo tacos. And if you do it before 11 o'clock, you get an egg on top. That makes it a breakfast Navajo taco. <laughs> That's what I need right there for my bike. I'm gonna get that before I go. Wow, it's a beautiful, beautiful gift shop here. You do have to have a mask. They will provide one for you. Look at these, Native American handmade pots. Wow. Absolutely beautiful. Wow. 
crazy. Wow, I'm gonna try a Navajo taco. Look at that. That's gonna be delicious. That was absolutely delicious. So I just got done eating here at the trading post. Oh my goodness. I eat Navajo tacos quite often. I live in Winslow and this one was absolutely fantastic. The dough had that nice crisp on the outside and it was soft on the inside. This was amazing. Perfect, perfect stop. I'm so glad that I came here and got a Navajo taco. So if you're in Cameron, come to this trading post and get your Navajo taco. I think I paid 17 bucks for my Navajo taco with my uh, iced tea. It was absolutely wonderful. Well, my experience here in Cameron has been a good one. It's about 53 miles from here to Flagstaff. So here we go. So it's kind of looking like there might be weather ahead, so I stopped and put on my raincoat. I love this. I got three lanes of highway, <laughs> so it's pretty cool. I can stay in the slow lane. And right now I'm starting to get a very light sprinkle. I'm really glad that I stopped and put my raincoat on. I wasn't sure if it was gonna rain or not. And I'm pulling a pretty good grade. I'm, uh, even the semi in front of me is having trouble going up this hill. So the monkey is doing good for what it is. So I just passed a sign that the altitude is 7,000 feet and the rain is coming down a little bit more. So I thought about, well, do I stop and weather out the storm? Or do I keep moving and try to get east of the storm on that Lake Mary Road? So I'm gonna choose the second option. I'm gonna go get fuel and I'm gonna try to stay east of the storm. I'm so glad I wore my raincoat. When the raindrops hit, they don't sting, so it's really nice. My fuel indicator just started blinking, so it's a good thing I'm in Flagstaff. Let's get some fuel. I didn't get near the amount of mileage out of this tank as I did on the last. Um, probably because the last tank I was doing 40 and 45. On this uh, tank of fuel that I just burned, um, with the exception of the first 30 miles, from this morning till now, I've been wide open running this thing as hard as I can run it. So I'm very interested to see what the gas mileage looks like. Uh, I don't think I did 199, that's for sure. <laughs> I'm guessing 100 or 90 or something because I was really getting on it. Did a lot of speeds. Uh, the lowest I got was like 50 in some places and unless I was pulling a hill or something, but um, got up to 63 at one point. So have a new a new high speed record for this bike, 63 miles an hour. That's crazy. To get out of a 125cc motor, 63 miles an hour. So $5.18, 1.24 gallons. Do I want a receipt? Yes, please. So we'll shut this. I'm gonna do the math here. Um, so this last tank, I got 112 miles 
out of this last tank, 112. 112 miles divided by 1.245 gallons. 89.95 miles to the gallon. That's what I get when I'm really getting after it. 89 miles to the gallon. That's still uh, fantastic. And the rain's coming down again. But I still think I'm going to get east of the storm if I get out on Lake Mary Road. Nasty this rain. Nasty. <laughs> I think it's funny that I got to go into the rain to get away from the rain. I think it's really interesting the contrast in weather that we've seen in just one day. I'm so glad that I decided to leave today instead of tomorrow because it showed for heavy rain on the forecast tomorrow. Okay, I'm on Lake Mary Road. Now I should be able to highball and get away from this storm. <laughs> I'm so happy. Thank goodness I'm out of that rain. I'm very happy. <laughs> <laughs> the temperatures are warming up a little bit too, so it feels good. I bet you when I was in Cameron, I drank five glasses of tea. I was kind of dehydrated, I think, so I got hydrated back up, but man, I got to pee like a racehorse. Okay, here's a glimpse at Lake Mary. There's a fishing boat or something out there. I don't know what they're catching, but it's not that big of a lake. It's kind of a brownish water looking lake. So as I was taking a leak, um, I heard some thunder off in front of me. So I might be getting into another storm. But I think the good thing about being east of Flagstaff is if I get into another storm, it's going to be a warm storm, not a cold one. That one in Flagstaff was cold. So as I'm walking around, I see a lot of mullein here. I saw yarrow too. There's some dandelion down there. There's a lot of good, there's a mushroom down, down there. <laughs> a lot of cool stuff to look at here. There's dandelion. So if you were looking for food in a survival situation, you could definitely get some, uh, some stuff. There's mullein. Now right up here, I'll start to see some yarrow here in a second these little white flowers these are all yarrow right here that's a beautiful uh, plant wonderful wild medicinal plant there's another example of mullen so yeah let me get back up to the monkey and, and get back on my uh, journey okay I know what you guys are gonna say you're crazy I just found a drop cloth had to pick it up. I mean, as a survivalist, you never know. That could be shelter, it could be bedding, it could be blanket. So, yeah, I had to pick it up. And here we go, I'm about to get into another one. right through the thick of it again uh, visibility is not real good I can still see uh, real clear in my mirrors though but the bikes running great this is a warmer rain than the one that I went through in Flagstaff so even though it's coming down pretty good it's not as bad and I think I'm through the thick of the storm so that's a blessing had to face a little adversity there for a second had to get comfortable in the uncomfortable, but it paid off. Now I'm pretty much out of it. Take a look at that moisture. What a gift from God. What a blessing. We have sure needed that moisture in this area. Well, 
thank goodness I am through that. I went through a little bit of adversity back there. What am I always telling you guys? Find comfort in the uncomfortable. Was it uncomfortable? Yes, it was. Was it a little chilly? Yes, it was. Was I safe? Yes, I was. Did I pray about it? Yes, I did. If I couldn't see through my mirrors and safely get through that, I would, I would have pulled over. I have a tarp and stuff. I could have pulled over and waited the storm out. But I still think that it was more important to go through it because that storm is moving eastward. So it's, I'm, I'm barely outrunning it. So I'm about two miles from a turnoff that goes to Winslow and this will be the last leg of this trip. Wow, it's been fun. So I mainly stopped just to pee. All right. So now we're gonna get back on the road again. Take a left hand turn and head back to Winslow. One miles from here. flashing you know the empty symbol started flashing at 115 so I've went 10 miles with the fuel gauge flashing and obviously the bike is still running these bikes don't have a reserve so when you run out of gas you're out of gas and I made it home sweet home Winslow Arizona now I gotta go get fuel cuz I am riding on fumes right now and this is the last fuel stop Woo! made a mess there we're gonna take a look we're gonna fill this thing up and then I'm gonna do the math and see uh, what kind of mileage I got so I left Flagstaff with the full tank and I ran from Flagstaff all the way here pretty much pegged the whole way I mean, I was running this thing hard. I went through rain, um, and I'm about 200 pounds with about 35 pounds of gear. And, it, and I was running it hard the whole way. Reached a new uh, high speed of 64 miles an hour. So that's quite interesting. I've never been that fast on this bike before. 64 uh, considering my weight and the weight of my gear that's crazy 64 miles an hour I didn't stay at 64 for long and uh, that looks uh, pretty full if it spills over and goes down that little pipe I've learned that it just drains right off on the ground 
so I don't want to do that well, let's go ahead and pull the key in now we're gonna figure out what the magic is so we had a hundred and twenty eight point one miles 128 point one divided by 1.31 gallons 1.31 gallons it's actually one one so with everything pegged worst case scenario uh, pegged the whole way going through rain 200 pound rider with 35 pounds of gear I still got 97.7 miles to the gallon that is absolutely fantastic five dollars and 37 cents so where else are you gonna go 128 miles for five dollars and 37 cents and that's at 409 a gallon that is just absolutely fantastic mileage Boy, looks like it's going to storm here at home. I'm just glad that I made it home safe. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for giving me a wonderful trip. That's uh, definitely a trip that I will never forget. Well, folks, that is one more trip in the books for the 2022 Honda Monkey this bike just blows me away at what it did on this trip for the longest time i always looked at this bike like oh it's just a toy you know yes it's a motorcycle but i didn't really put it in the category of real motorcycles until finishing up this trip i have a whole nother level of respect for this 2022 Honda Monkey. I also have a whole nother level of confidence in this 2022 Honda Monkey. This is not just a bike that you can play around on. You can actually do a real trip on a bike like this. Now I'm not saying that it's fantastic the whole way. There's adversities that you gotta face. Um, it's not a fast bike. So a lot of paying attention in your mirrors and making sure that you're getting out of the way and pulling off for people. But after I got the break-in miles and on the way home today, everything that I did today from leaving the Grand Canyon all the way home, um, and especially that last leg that you saw from Flagstaff to here, I had it fully pegged and you guys saw the gas mileage that I got out of this bike and the performance it just blows me away. If you want a faster bike, get a bigger engine. If you get a bigger engine, you're going to get less fuel efficiency. So if you want this high fuel efficiency like I got, even today pegged from Flagstaff all the way here, pretty, I was pegged I'd say 99% of the way home from Flagstaff on this last tank of gas. It just blows me away. And I got about 15 miles from the moment that that gas gauge started to flash empty. I went about 15 miles before I got to the gas pump. So this trip has been fantastic. I love this bike. Is it the fastest one in the world? No, it's, the seat was comfortable. I don't know of any other Honda Monkey that's been to the Grand Canyon and even with that is there any videos out there of the Honda Monkey going to the Grand Canyon if you guys know of one please drop it in the comments section down below I'd love to see it thank you again so much for your support I put a lot into this video not just in getting out and doing it but let's take a look and see how many miles in total I've went on this trip. Let's go to trip A. Trip B, I just reset because I put gas in it. Trip A, 467 
0.7 miles. Folks, I've put 467 miles on this bike. So if that's not worthy of you sharing this video, liking this video, and leaving a comment down below and giving this channel some traction, I don't know what is. With all that being said, folks, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please feel free to leave your comments down below, like this video, share this video. Let me say that again for those in the back. Please share this video. Let's shake up that algorithm. I put a lot into these videos. I love you all. Thanks for watching. We'll see you on the next one. I can definitely see another trip in the future for this 2022 Honda Monkey. I love this bike. We'll see you next time. Bye for now.